which are employed by agriculture, whether it be McDonald's or Coca-Cola, whether it be within the processing factory that makes cherry oils, or it be out in the fields of Somalia or Cuba. We are all affected by this simple but also important thing called food security. Mr. Chairman. Food security! What is food security? The World Health Organization at their 1996 World Food Summit defines food security as when all people at all times have access to safe type of access to safe nutritious food to support a healthy and active life. When all people at all times have access to safe, sufficient food, safe nutritious food that supports a healthy and active life. When we look at our country of the Bahamas, how many people have access to food at all times? We all seem to think that we always have access to food and that all of us have access to food. But this is not true. We fail to realize that a good percentage of our population live below the poverty line Granted, our poverty line is a bit higher than most poverty lines around the world. Our GDP is higher. Our GDP being at about $26,800 per annum. However, how many of us are really making that? We have a number of Bahamians fresh out of high school making $18,000 a year. Could any of you survive on $18,000 a year outside of your mother's home? So think about it. When we look at our poverty line, we have Bahamians living on less than two to three dollars a day. Just imagine trying to survive off of five dollars a day trying to get a meal. It's near impossible. You may get one meal for five dollars or a little less. No, buy a cup of me. So therefore, you realize that it's very, very difficult for a person to survive or live in the actual state of, of, under the definition of what food security is. And then at all times, we don't always have food in this country. That may sound weird to you because we can all always find food. But do you know, and I'm sure you do that, we only have three weeks supply where the food on our food store shelves at any time. If a global catastrophe was to happen right at this very moment, we would be in the food stores looting and robbing as they do all over the world when major issues occur. We, we, we don't think about these things as behemoths. We tend to take life as it is for granted. We have had life too good in this country. Another issue is that there's a lot of job instability in the Bahamas. A kid get, gets locked up, and I heard the question asked earlier, what, what a person do is on legalizing marijuana, but an 18 or 17 year old gets locked up for having one joint, gets four years imprisonment. And you know what happens to that kid for the rest of his life? He is tending, he is tending to live a life in and out of prison, having menial jobs, making that 18000 or less. He becomes a 40-year-old, making $18,000 or less, with two to three kids, with two to three baby mamas, to whom he has to pay child support. How in the world do you expect this man to live under the definition of food security? It is never going to live under the definition So again, I go back to the definition, when all people at all times have access to safe, nutritious food. Safe and nutritious food. What is the food quality of the food we consume in this country? Yes. Dude, this is the best. Yes. How many of us really know? Yes. The Bahamas is right now trying to join WTO. When I wrote a paper when I was in university on why the Bahamas should not join the WTO. Many people don't understand that WTO holds countries like the Bahamas, excuse my, my vocabulary, but holds us by the balls. Get it right. And 
the bigger countries that grow the same things that we grow through WTO and free trade, they muscle their way into our economies and stop us from shipping outside. At present, banana growers in Panama and St. Lucia, and I believe it's Mozambique, are trying to compete with some huge countries, some huge plantations in Indonesia. They can't, they simply don't even have the land mass to compete with them. Okay? So, when you talk about the quality of food, which WTO seeks to regulate, and we're now trying to meet the standards of WTO. However, the food that we are currently getting from the United States, from Canada, from Brazil, is like most of our cars, second hand. Yeah. Yeah. And that may sound rude or offensive to some of you, but just think about it. What you put in is what you get out. So that goes to the healthy and active life. But I will, I will dare one of you, as I often dare people, get a tomato that is brought in, a vine ripened tomato of the food store, and go to a local farmer or someone who grows tomatoes in their yard and leave the two of them on the shelf and tell me which one spoils the quickest. And I tell you that the one that spoils the quickest is the better one. Why? It's not full of hormones, it's not full of pesticides, it's not full of fertilizers, and it's not full of forced ripening gases. None of which will support to a healthy and active life. You see, the Bahamas is one of the most sickly countries in the world, I mean, I think the third highest rate of breast cancer in the world for capital. Highest in the region, but the third highest in the That's world. Outrageous. That's wrong. Now, if you look at, if you ever heard of Dr. Sebi, he is now, he's still alive, a very old, of African origin doctor who believes that food is the healing of everything. I've seen some European doctors now preaching and teaching that food can heal any disease. Uh, I right even see man made diseases right now. Right they can heal. Okay? If you change your diet, you think you hear about the alkaline diet being. If you make your body alkaline, cancer cells can't survive. I'll tell you for, for a fact, when my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, one of the first things the doctor told her was to change your diet. He told her to eat a more organic, more natural diet. Okay? So, when we talk about safe food, healthy, active life, we have to realize that this whole thing called GMOs, which our director of agriculture told me to my face is a non-factor. You just check global news today on, on GMOs. This happened two years ago. Our director of agriculture at a Hines for Hunger town hall meeting said in a group, in a room full of food security agriculture enthusiasts that GMOs are a non-factor. <laughs> And I will tell you that not no more than two months ago, global and even the American scientists have proven and released their, their what do you call them, their studies, their research articles on the, on the evidence that GMOs are definitely con contributors to cancer. <coughs> That's the first one they prove, and I'm sure they will prove a whole lot more in years to come. See, we fail to realize the, the powers that be in this world that tend to fight these people down. See, when Obama passed the law protecting Monsanto and Syngenta, the two biggest names, and the only names in, G in, in genetically modified organisms, they were able to muzzle the mouths of all the universities and all the hospitals who are studying to try and prove that they are no good for us. They're good for corporate agriculture. They're good for big pharma. And that is why Bayer, one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world, is now trying to buy Monsanto, the largest GMO organization company in the world. So I come back to the Bahamas now. Our local agriculture and fisheries, which our farmers and our fishermen provide some of the best some of the best to offer in vegetables, fruits. Our pineapple, since the Hawaii, since the Americans from Dole came here and stole the concept and took it to Hawaii, 
Our pineapples are still number one in the world. Grown by Lady Diana Thompson, or Lady Di, as she's known, by Diana Thompson and Gregory Town and Lutro. Still has the number one pineapple in the world. Right here. <laughs> Bahamian soil. Okay? You didn't want it. <laughs> okay? So the fact that our, our local agriculture and marine resources or fisheries, and how everyone else, time to let, it's only 7% of our GDP. 7% of our economy. It shows you that we have a lot of work to do in order to bring ourselves up to the level which we can be for a healthier, for a safer, and for a more financially secure economy. A wise man once said that agriculture not only creates riches for a country, but riches that she can call her own. Because what is grown here is ours. Nobody can take it, just like knowledge. No one can take it from you once you have it. So what is the goal? The goal is to reach a level of food security. Be it 60% in the next 20 years. Bouncy. Be it 50% in the next 20 years. Bouncy still will not work because they have two cornered with Monsanto. So gentlemen, how do we get there?